Everyone, well, this is the next stop uh, on the Ithaca road trip. We have a 2004 uh, Chevy truck, 1500, with a 4.8 liter V8. And the customer complaint here is this persistent P0327 Knox Sensor 1 circuit low frequency. Now, he said he installed brand new GM OEM Knox sensors and the wiring harness that comes up here. And then you know this goes through here to the engine computer so how do we diagnose this trouble code let's look up the service info on GM see so verify that you have the code and right here this is a great shortcut so set your multimeter to the ohm scale and these sensors should be in the range of 93 to 107 kilo ohms okay so with the harness unplugged so I'm just measuring from the pin here through the sensor to ground. So the ground of my meter, this red lead, goes to the battery ground. And then the yellow lead I have connected to Knox sensor 1, that's the one setting a code. I'm sorry, right here. And then, no, oh, different meter. <laughs> this meter here, the yellow lead is on Knox sensor 1. And we can switch it to see knock sensor 2. So here's the resistance. Make sure ground is good. 111 kilo ohms. Okay. Let's go to the other one. 111 kilo ohms. Okay. So those are consistent. They're brand new. They're exactly identical. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with the sensor itself. Now, how do we verify wiring integrity on the harness side? Well, with the key on, there should be a bias voltage. Now, it, it's probably very small, but um, let's measure it. So the yellow lead here is on the harness side for knock sensor 1. Black lead is on harness side, knock sensor 2. So knock sensor 1, make sure our key is on. Yep. We have almost nothing but 0 0.8 millivolts. On NOx sensor 2, we have a consistent 18.9 millivolts. So that's, there's a difference there. We turn the key off. And that voltage drops a little bit. About 15. Okay, the relay just clicked. Now we have 10. And let's turn the key on again. 19 millivolts on knock sensor 2, harness side. Let's go back to knock sensor 1. You see that's garbage. It's basically zero. So I'm suspecting there's a broken wire somewhere between the PCM and the knock sensor and how do we go about finding that well we can uh, go to the wiring diagram very simple so knock sensor one signal knock sensor two signal it's on connector C1 there's a dark blue and a light blue wires so we go right to the engine computer and see if these wires are continuous we can even unplug the engine computer and do a continuity test with you know two little test lights basically feed voltage into the wire and see if it lights a light on the harness side there and kind of do it that way so let's get the PCM unplugged find these wires and uh, hopefully we'll find a broken wire so we got the computer up and took this little plastic cover off pin 51 dark blue wire that's knock sensor 1 and then pin 11 light blue wire knock sensor 2 now first I want to with the key on measure the bias voltage here and there and see if it's the same so 18.7 millivolts on both meters and that's on the dark blue wire we didn't see that before so I think by messing with the PCM here flipping it upside down we fixed something let's go back to knock sensor 2 Whoops. 
same reading on there and then we'll just move this lead over here see if it's uh, jumping around you don't have a good connection and plug it in there it is 18.7 steady so I think now I want to rig up a test light two test lights and check the continuity of this blue wire. So we'll feed a test light from battery positive to here and have another little test light to battery ground over there and wiggle it and see if the test light flickers or, or you know what happens. Okay so we have two test lights rigged up so from battery positive it goes through this little bulb you can see it's dim the current goes to the pin with the dark blue wire pin 51 and then from the dark blue wire here through the yellow lead to our second test light. So this is a continuity check. Both test lights should be dim when there's current passing through the wire. So you can see there's some evidence of rodent infestation here. We got the fuse box cover off and I'm just doing a little uh, harness wiggle check here. Just gentle. I, I know I saw that light flicker hmm So I found the dark blue wire right in this harness bend. I want to give it the good old fashioned Keith tug test. And if it breaks, then the test light will go out in our voltmeter. Right now it's at 8.5. It's measuring the voltage you know, in between the two test lights. So it's somewhere between 0 and 12. I don't know. So the harness actually looks to be in good shape. There's continuity, did the wiggle check, the lights stay on, key tug test, it passed, no, uh, no issues. Took the connector off of the PCM, and hey, there is, it looks like, a little bit of water intrusion on this lower part, because the PCM sits like this. You see the top is nice and shiny, all the pins in there. But the bottom half, uh, looks a little oxidized. So the knock sensor pins connect towards the bottom of the connector. So if we can't find a harness problem, let's plug everything back in and then measure the bias voltages again over there. Do another wiggle check and potentially it just could be terminal fretting or minor water intrusion at this lower part of the connector. You can see down here that the seal is just a lot crustier than up here. So let's uh, yes, if the salt gets in there, these very sensitive voltages for the knock sensor, they won't like that. Let's clean that out, spray some deoxid, and put it back together. Alright, here we go. So I'm going to spray the pins there and inside the connector. We'll shake that out, and reconnect it. Okay, so let's just do a final verification here. Key on. So the yellow channel is our former bad knock sensor 1 bias voltage right at the sensor. And this is sensor 2. So now they're identical. We didn't have that before. So the only issue that I see here was little terminal fretting corrosion right at, you know, on this lower part of the PCM connector. We sprayed the oxid, put it back together. I'm confident in this repair and uh, I want the owner here, he's going to fix some fuel lines and he's going to take it for a spin. If the coke comes back, I'm going to be right back here, no charge, and I think I think this truck is in, you know, it'll be it'll be good for to go for a while. It'll pass the emissions inspection in New York. You know, the, the money light can't be on here. 
but you don't have to have uh, rocker arms or fenders, right, Bill? Right. Oh, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, so let's clear out the trouble code. Return this thing back to the shop owner, and he'll let me know if it worked. All right, in OBD2 mode, clear fault code. Yes. Okay. Read fault code. No fault code. Perfect.